Good morning. Good morning. Let's say that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the mighty, mighty. Pittsburgh Seventh-day Adventist Church in beautiful Pittsburgh, California, where the sun is partially shining. A little rain, but it's a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Let's stand and start service this morning. If you know it, sing with us. I love you, Lord. Here we go. I love One more time. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay, I don't know what the other pastor say. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> okay, we got that. <laughs> Lord, 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 this is such a wonderful day. Even though it is raining, like they said, but you know, God has made this day, and we are grateful for that. First of all, I want to welcome any visitors we have in the sanctuary and any first-time visitors that's online. Welcome. Welcome to the mighty, the mighty, the mighty, the mighty. Pittsburgh Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay, so uh, let's say, a no, let me do this first. You know, we've been, we've been, um, we're, um, let me get it. I'm a little nervous here now. 
Okay. We're been, we've been studying in the psalm, in the book of Psalms for our Sabbath school. Okay. And I want to keep with the tradition and I want to make sure that we stay in Psalms right now. So what I have is a passage from Psalm 17 and 6. Get my phone out. Okay, it reads, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. We, as the praise team, always sing this song, and I know everybody loves it. It's called Again. Again, I call you, and again, you answer. Again, I need you, and again, you're there. Again, I reach out, and again, you hold me. You console me more once again. So that's and let's bow our heads so we can say our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, you woke us up this morning in our right minds, and we're glad that you did. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to bless everyone in the sanctuary and bless those that are online, those that are sick, those that are hungry, and those that need you, Lord, we ask that you provide those things for them. We ask you to bless the, the speaker of the hour, Pastor Osborne. And we ask you to let us hear his word and take that into heart, what he is telling us from, that came from the most high. Lord, we ask you all these blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. You know, and looking at the uh, Sabbath school lesson, reading, uh, studying the book of Psalms, it's about giving God praise in words and deeds and in song. Lift up his name, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Our hymn of the morning is found in our hymnals. Number 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Shall we stand, please? Everyone singing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Submission. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and 
So we expect all to come. As number two, as the pastor stated last Sabbath, the music department is doing a survey. And this is a survey. As he promised us, we was going to have it in writing for those that didn't want to get online. Okay. It only takes about two to four minutes to complete. There are hard copies, and like I said, here it is, available for those who do not want to fill it out online. An email will be sent out soon. And there's also a QR code available. <coughs> Ineza will show on the screen. There she is. Hey, go, girl. You are on it today. Every day. <laughs> okay. So anyway, for those who have... Who's our, our phone savvy? You can take a picture of that and it'll take you straight to it. Okay? All right. The new quarterlies are available, and I saw that uh, um, Ronnell passed some of them out to you. Those that are not, not here today, you can pick them up from uh, Sister Woods. Okay? And that's the end of our announcements. Thank you. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. You know, this is going to be, don't say it. It's our last time given being in charge today with praise. We're not, not going nowhere. We're not saying we're going, going anywhere. anywhere. But we're about to have a new leader coming in. Amen. And we're going to work with her. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I got to say this, once I, I went to a church and <laughs> I became the minister, uh, the minister of music, and as I did, this, uh, the whole choir quit. <laughs> <laughs> My heart was broken. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo-wee. But God uh, sent me to another church. <laughs> And we lifted him up mightily. It was so good. Amen. Amen. So never give up. So, you know, we're not going to quit. We're going to keep on serving him. Amen. But I want you guys to come on. Let's, let's bless the Lord this morning. Let's give him praise. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord with me. Oh. <laughs> you going to praise the Lord with me? All right. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. 
Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Everybody say, come on and praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Well, bless the Lord with me. We're going to bless. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. name again. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. We're going to give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Giving God praise. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen. Amen. No, with each person, as we walk this Christian road, <laughs> we got to be patient with each other. We ask God to be, please be patient with us. Because we still got a few issues. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to look out for each other. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Be now. Please, 
God is not through with me yet. I want you to know. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Oh, oh when God, when God gets through with me. When the Lord gets through with me. When God gets through with me. I shall, I shall come forth. I shall, I shall come forth. Let's one more time. If you should see me, yes, sir. All right. And I'm not walking right. If you should hear me, say it. And I'm not talking right. Please, I want you to remember that the Lord is not. God gets through with me. Yes, sir. His mercy is so good. It's so great. That's the only way we can make it. <laughs> Else this world would just swallow you right up, you know. I want you to forget about him. But we serve a God that is mighty. Mighty in power. Mighty in love. Great is his mercy towards us. Great is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day. Sing with us. Great is your mercy. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness. Your loving kindness towards me. Tender. Your tender mercies I see. Day after day. Day after day. Your tender mercy, I 
great is your grace. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy I see day after day forever faithful towards me. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Have you ever been on the road and there was a train crossing, like a railway crossing, and traffic was stopped, and you got beside yourself, wondering what just happened because you have a place to be, and you waited and waited and waited. If you know what I'm talking about and you're here, you know what happened. You just have to be patient. And sometimes our patience runs out. But in the book of Hebrews, it says, hold on to the promise and the faith, because the one who promised will do what he promised to do. It's prayer time. And our prayers sometimes do not get answered. And I'm looking for, I thought I memorized the list, but I'm looking for it right here. It says that, uh, some prayers just take their time to get answered. And we've been praying for several people who have undergone different procedures. Sister Michelle's cousin will keep your loved one in prayer. Sister Cerny, uh, Lori Cerny was in the hospital and uh, she's home, but Lord, we ask that the Lord will continue to work that out. Sister Nelly Brown's sister. Sister Mac, your friend Doreen, the Hubbards, 
the Smiths, and there's a praise report from the Mitchams that uh, Jerome is nine years cancer-free. And we continue to pray for the family's friends that are still going through treatments. And we prayed for my father. And uh, I spoke to him this week. And even in my anxieties, in my doubts, in my fears and all that, the man was very positive and grateful. And I'm saying to myself, why am I even fretting? But it is what it is. He says to me, son, we are so blessed that we had you five. And one of you houses us to get treatment in America. He says to me, God knew that we would need this time to be where we are to get the treatment. And one of you was here. And after he told me that, the next day, I wake up to news that a cousin suddenly passed away. So now I'm in this crucible where I'm like, okay, there's faith here when there is illness. There is death That's where right. there was no illness. Say it, Elder. Suddenly. Yes, sir. We serve a faithful God. Yes, we do. And like the scenario of waiting in the train track so the traffic can move and 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 the train is not you can't even hear the train. You hear the cling, 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 you go, how long will this take? How long will it be until God answers your prayer, my prayer? God is not on your schedule. God is God. He's not on my schedule. God is God. He'll do what we, he will do for us when he does it. So like scripture says, he's faithful. And the song was appropriate. He's faithful. And he will do what he will do when he'll do what he needs to do. So I just need to show up, thank him for this moment, because we never know. But this is our time to say thank you, Father, for all that you do. If there's any other prayer request in the audience, we'll take that. Otherwise, we'll pray as far as you can, whether you kneel, stand, or whatever you do. Let's pray that God who hears will do what he needs to do. We say thank you. Even the fact that we are able to say thank you, it means we got out of bed this morning and we came here. Yes, some of us may be a little bit slow, in a little bit of pain, a little bit of comfort, but we are here to say thank you for this day, for this moment. Father, we thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your grace and your mercy that we can have access to 24-7. We realize that your timing is not our timing. And Father, we thank you nonetheless that you are able to do exceedingly more than we can ever imagine. You have heard the prayer requests, the praise reports. Father, we ask that you'll continue to do what you do. But most importantly, Father, we ask that you'll change us from within. Our attitude, our eyesight from within that we will see beyond the circumstances that we see around us. It is not easy, and nobody said it will ever be. We live on this earth that is marred by sin. Death has been with us from the beginning of time. Illness has been with us from forever. But Father, you still remain sovereign, and the great physician that you are, you'll attend to each need that every one of us has that has brought up 
or even the unspoken. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the good report. But Father, we also have those that are still lingering in pain, discomforts, in hospitals, on medications, on life support systems. Father, we ask that at your own time, your will will be done. But in the meantime, we remain faithful, remain hopeful, and when it's that time, Lord, we long for the day when we will be in a place where illness, sorrow, discomfort, disappointment will never be more anymore. That will be in heaven. But until then, Lord, we ask that we will be faithful to heed the call. Follow me, because in you there is rest and eternal rest. Forgive us, Father, for our shortcomings, for our doubts, our fears. Lord, we ask that today, when we leave this place, we'll be comforted, we'll be empowered to tell somebody that there is a Savior who loves you, who dearly wants to see you saved. May we tell somebody that there is a better tomorrow. We pray, Father, that you will bless us with the word that you have prepared for us today. Your manservant has served you for many, many years and continues to serve. We pray that you be with Dr. Osborne, as he presents in your place a word to your people, that we will be empowered, we will be faithful until the end. Pray for him and his family. Continue to ask that you guide him and direct him from day to day as he serves you. Lord, we ask that whatever you will for us will be according to your will. We pray for this church and the church members that are here and those online that we'll continue to be faithful until we see you. And whatever we may have forgotten, Lord, we ask that you'll not fail to grant it to us at your own time. We ask in faith, in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, as is the custom, it is time for offerings. And uh, as somebody had mentioned uh, last week or a few couple of weeks ago, you may not notice some of the needs we have around the church because we, have, we are blessed with people that take care of this church. But if you were to peel behind the veil, there are many projects that are underway that need to be taken care of. So I want you to let you know that your offerings, our offerings that we give every day, every week, go to help us make this place a safe place that you and I can come into. Amen. That those who come even later can come into a place that is suitable. So we ask that you will continue to be faithful. We thank you for your faithfulness because without you, we cannot do those things, and we need this place for this time. Until then, shall we pray. Our Father, we ask that you bless the giver, and most importantly, Father, we give of our hearts to serve you, and even not meager means, in your name we ask, amen. Good to 
saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Say it. I think we're going to get a little closer to you today, okay? Come on, ladies, go on down. Terry going to play that piano, which he does so well. We got something special. So we're going to hover in a little Amen. bit. Amen. We hope that you guys enjoy this next selection. It has been very heartful and meaningful to us. So we hope that our singing will present itself to you too. The devil never wins. No. <laughs> he tries, but he's, he doesn't win. We are victorious already. My life, my love, my all. Little volume, Terry. Terry. Low volume. Volume. Amen. 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 
beautiful. Thank you, Terry. It's so true. It's always good to have a team effort. Amen. Blood. Your 
Thank you for all that uh, has gone on before. Yeah. Solomon, I love your wife. <laughs> Sabbath school was great. Uh, Terry, well, you know, hey, man. <laughs> in the singing group. And I say all that because I was sitting there, I kind of got lost. I, I, I forgot I was preaching. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh. When when I was young, uh, there were four of us in terms of my brothers and sisters, and and uh, my mother did not raise us the same. We were in the same house, but she didn't raise us the same way. And uh, I was the youngest, and sometimes I really concerns me. But anyway, I was the youngest. And my mother, she didn't do things like help me with spelling or reading or, or, or any, you know, homework or schoolwork or anything like, like that. But the reason was that I was the youngest and I was just supposed to know. Okay? Right? Yes. Where it was. <laughs> I thought that was kind of strange, but uh, but I, I'm just saying that to just to, that that uh, I'm going to talk about mamas, <laughs> mamas in action, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, even when we don't understand them, <laughs> they are doing something that, as an adult, we can surely appreciate. Our Father and our Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring about us. Uh, lift our understanding uh, so that we don't box you in, that we don't limit you, that we don't turn you into kind of a superman. You are not a man. You are the sovereign creator of existence. Help us, Lord. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So with that little minor backup, I mean uh, background, when I, was, uh, when I was a boy and I got into the first grade and I had a brother that was in the second grade and a 
sister that was in the fourth grade and then a sister that was in the uh, seventh grade. <laughs> yes, sir. And so I, I was sitting in the class and instruction was done differently all those many years ago than they are in, in our contemporary world. Uh, but we, we were learning words, learning to read uh, with picture books, right? And so it, you have this book, and it always had uh, pictures in there. And uh, on this particular occasion, we were going through professions. And a uh, little couple of lines, maybe four or five words, you know, but it was talking about, you know, then you look and there was a picture and there was a policeman, you know, and then there was a fireman and there was a mailman and there was a, you know, you know a police officer going, going on, on down the list. And... Uh, I was bored to death. <laughs> I didn't need the pictures. I could already read. <laughs> you know? And so I was squirming around and looking around, and not paying attention and irritating my teacher. <laughs> you know? But one thing that I noticed, you know, there was a judge and a truck driver and, you know, even at that young and, and, and tender age, uh, to me, school was kind of fronting itself off as education, but it was more about, to me, indoctrination and propaganda. <laughs> you know, because in this book, same book, but then we had, you notice when, when, what I said, you know, there were no firefighters or firemen, male man, <laughs> you know, everything was da 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 uh, And in the same little uh, picture book, then, then we had a nurse, we had a housewife, and we had a ballerina and a model, you know. We had an actress. Okay. Uh, and you, with the picture, we were getting a very, very solid picture of expectations and, uh, sorry, Decept, there was no male, I mean, no female doctor. <laughs> you could be a nurse. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and you know, so then my, my young mind, I was sitting and uh, I didn't want to read these books. And naturally, you know, they, they did that little thing, and you had your little quizzes on the, what it was, all, all, all that kind of stuff. So I was an extremely poor student, okay? Extremely poor student. And at the end of the school year, I went from the first grade to the third grade. <laughs> I mean, the first woman in my life, outside of my mama, was my first grade teacher. Her name was Mrs. Keys, and she was an angel. She recognized, everything was, you know, all jammed around, but she recognized that this little boy was different than her 
expectation. She just did. I, I don't know why. So though, although on paper, <laughs> you know, things like uh, citizenship and all those, those were great when I was, a, you know, you know, I mean, she couldn't give me a, an A for citizenship because I was, I was, I wasn't a good citizen. <laughs> she, you know, she, yeah, she, she, she couldn't, you know, and they had penmanship and all those other, you know, all these kinds of things. It had nothing to do exactly with that academics. And uh, so as the, the year went on, this is what I learned later. I didn't, you know, that though I was a terrible student, frustrated my mama with those report cards, my teacher kept a separate record. <laughs> and we talked about things like uh, Dumars, and Three Musketeers. And we talked about science and chemistry. We talked, you know, little kids, they're learning two plus two is four, you know. And she was talking about, with me, you know, A plus B equals C. A over B and B cannot be zero. You know, she was just because she could. <laughs> you know, and she said, oh, wow, do you know about this? And da 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 So the point number one. You and I are exposed to realities that may condemn us, that may we don't measure up. We're not normal. <laughs> oh, but sometimes there's a, there's a watching mama's eye. <laughs> Oh, that cuts through all the chase and all the negative and all the rest. Yeah. It reminds me of my, my, my grandmother who, who died early in, in my life. I mean, I was 17. I mean, she, she didn't get to be an old senior citizen kind of stuff. And she told my mother uh, when I was 15 and... Ooh, Lord have mercy, I won't explain that. But anyway, she told my mother, she said, one day, you are going to be proud of that boy if he stays alive. <laughs> I was angry. I was hostile. Uh, ooh, had some tough teenage years. But Grandma, she saw something different than what the external world was. Of course, this is Women's Month, and what I'm going to talk about are women <laughs> and uh, their powerful influences, though appreciated, understood, or not. Yes, indeed. Brother Moses, you and I, without the women in our lives, Sorry, brother, we, we ain't making it. <laughs> and so uh, when, we, when, we, when we talk about what is, when we, when we talk about our Lord, I, I hope we, we understand that God doesn't need a tie, a shirt, and a male pronoun, <laughs> our father, you know, he, you know, all that. He doesn't need permission. He doesn't need uh, our prayers. He doesn't need our instruction. The benefactors of God are you and I with a listening ear. And I know that 
there's a lot of critiquing that goes on. We critique churches, critique Bible translations, critique God, critique each other, and all the rest. But on this day, on this day, I hope that we can listen to the heartbeat of a woman that knows God. Three things I'll say and then I'll sit down. <laughs> One I have to tell you about a woman, her name was Dean. On my street, when I was a when youngster, there was 28 houses, 14 on this side of the street, 14 on the other side of the street. It was Holly Street and 73rd. We lived in the seventh house right in the middle, you know. Dean lived in the 11th house, <laughs> 8, 9, 10, 11. And Dean, she had a husband. She was, she was married. He wasn't worth much, but he, she was married. <laughs> in and out of trouble. He had addiction problems, all kinds of things. Yeah. Might work 30 days. Then he'd get fired. In and out of jail. You know. But Dean had five children when she moved on to that, that little block. And she had a job, minimum wage. She was uh, born and raised in Louisiana. Had her first child when she was 16. Then the other four after she got to California. And what I'm talking about is a person that lived under circumstances. I knew her for over 50 years before she passed. Uh, I never heard her complain. I never, you know, just, just some things about her. All the things that you might think that a person could com complain about So she worked her job. She, it was a county job. So she got paid once a month. And one day I was sitting at her kitchen table uh, and, and she had cast her check. There were no computers. You didn't do any online, anything. <laughs> and she came home. So I just happened to be there when, and she sat down her one month salary after taxes and all of that kind of thing was exactly $300. Five children, no financial help from a husband, <laughs> $300. Then she sat down and her house note was $80. Boom. She, the, uh, gas and electric and all that kind of thing. You wouldn't recognize it today. But that was all, all of the in the water and the trash, and it was $25. Then she had the uh, insurance for the house. I don't know, it was $12 or something like that. You know, boom. She took $100 for food. In those days, $100 could do a lot of food, but that Five children for the next 30 days, $100, not 101. <laughs> Boom. When she got finished with all this monies that was already designated, she had $30 and a few pennies for the next 30 days. A dollar a day. I'm, I'm giving you this detail to, so you can understand that, that raising these five children and living in this house and, and you know, everything had to be really tight. <laughs> and, and, and I was sitting there. Now, now, I had two parents, small business owners. My daddy worked two jobs. My, you know, my mama worked. 12, 14 hours a day, 
my mama's car <laughs> note was more than this woman's everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just, you know, just a whole different economic uh, reality four days, four, four houses down, down the street. And every day, I saw this woman go to the corner, 73rd and Holly, there was a bus stop. She did not drive. Even if she did, she wouldn't have been able to afford gas. Uh, but it, she, she caught the bus. She had these tokens. Well, that was also part of her, you know, she got her bus tokens for the, for the next month. And she went to work, rain or shine, five days a week, worked 40 hours a week. Like I said, the $300 a month was her paycheck. I don't know if she had sick leave or not, paid sick leave or not, because she never missed work, okay? <laughs> and uh, then even in, in the, that shape of, of whatever, and then the, her oldest son became my best friend o over the years. We were 11 months apart, and then she had the others behind him. Uh, but one day I was there, and, and this neighborhood, when, when I grew up, uh, if you were at a neighbor's house, and all the neighbors knew, knew each other, uh, that, that, and it was dinner time or lunch time, and you were in the house, they didn't send you home. You sat down, you know, table. I mean, that, they all did that. My mother did that. They, you know. Under these conditions that I just spoke, this day, it was toward the end of the month. Her payday would have been, it was on the 1st, so this would have been like whatever month it was, the 29th or 28th or 30th or something like that, right at the end of the month. And, and I was there acting my usual little nutty self, and uh, it was dinner time, and so she, I sat down. At the table, right, with the with the rest of them, and there was she put down five. She didn't put a napkin down for herself. Five napkins, and then one for me. Six napkins. And six spoons. And there was a large family size. Uh, peanut butter jar, and she opened it up, and uh, six glasses, they had Kool-Aid, that old crazy Kool-Aid stuff, <laughs> you know. I just described to you dinner. She had no more money. She would get paid in a day or two, and at the end of every month, they got those last day or two, dinner was a spoon of peanut butter and a glass of Kool-Aid. And, I, you know, I mean, here I am. You know, my, my daddy was, was a waiter, and then he also was a small business owner. You know, uh, I mean, we ate filet mignon steaks and you know and all that. I mean, all, whatever whatever he served those white folks, you know, he always ordered enough for himself to bring home. You know, so we we ate well. I mean, it, <laughs> the very idea that I just ate dinner <laughs> on the uh, and the fact that I'm here today talking about it, you know, it had a marked effect on my on my life. Okay. Consistently. All, she never finished high school. All five of her children graduated from high school. Uh, her second oldest son, uh, her oldest son, like he's 11 months younger than me, he went in the Army, so he didn't, he didn't do the college thing. But her second uh, uh, son got a scholarship. He was six foot seven. Basketball, graduated, 
uh, with a business uh, degree, has a beautiful home in Texas. He raised two sons. One son played professional basketball. The other son the, graduated from college. The other son went to the uh, Air Force Academy, graduated. He's now uh, a military officer. Whew. There's an old song, Billy Preston, Grandma's Hands. <laughs> this woman's effect in the real world propelled a, oh and her oldest granddaughter is now a a, a lawyer <laughs> the, the the effect of this humble simple what in those days was called a high school dropout <laughs> her tenacity her love, the extension of herself, generosity when you had nothing would feed this clown, <laughs> you know, who in her world had access to everything. You know. uh, I love that woman. Uh, I was at her uh, emergency, I mean, uh, intensive care unit when she was... Uh, she was going to die. And I was there with her, <laughs> her, her other children. She, I was always her son. <laughs> and, and, and when I walked in, because she lived in Washington at the time, she had, she had moved after her children all finished school in Oakland. Uh, then, then she moved out of Oakland. She got a better job. Little side note on her nutty husband. Uh, he, he dropped back in <laughs> to life, uh, and uh, finally, after all those years, detox, got himself together, uh, you know, so the last 15 years of her life uh, were financially in much better shape, you know, and, and et cetera, uh, but this is that 15th year, and she looked up, and she saw me. And she shook her head. And then uh, she was very weak. She couldn't say much. And she said, uh, I, I would like to, to stay alive. I hope the doctors can work it out. And she said, but uh, <laughs> that's really not very important. Thank you. She said, when I see you, that little street hardhead ruffian who <laughs> carried guns and knives, she said, a preacher? <laughs> and she hugged me. 24 hours later, she was dead. Wow. Mama's in action. To be able to put your life energy, your faith, your strength into the undesirable, hoping for a desirable outcome. You and I are blessed, and you and I need to understand it. And there are some hard-head males that run this country, that walk our streets, that buy into some kind of sick understanding of a woman's place, secondary, tertiary to men, brothers and sisters, we talked about worship today. I hope you learn, we here, learn how to worship. Because if you don't understand the value of a woman, you've never worshiped in your life, even if you thought you did. God is something else. 
And as we continue to live, that's one. Number two, my second statement. I'm only going to make three. My second statement, here we are. We living now. This country is facing a crisis, just like it did in 1776, just like it did in 1861, just like it did in 1954. This nation is facing a crisis. And the reality is there are more women in America than there are men. Another reality is that there are more women registered to vote than there are men. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. <laughs> Yeo has a wife and two daughters. That's three. Then there's Yeo. He's a man. I have one, two, three, four daughters and a wife. That makes eight women. His son, Yeho, Elliot, and his one son, that's four. <laughs> if we had a democratic discussion, no matter what those men decided, <laughs> it's going to be turned on what those women agree on. And so this country, in a very short time, is going to turn on the vote and choice of women. You can look at whatever polls you want to look at. You can argue whatever case you want. It doesn't matter. You can like Biden or you can hate Biden. You can like Trump or you can hate Trump. It won't matter. Because women will decide if we are going to have a sex abuser, a liar, a thief, an adulteress, and an insane maniac, an autocrat, a hopeful dictator, they will decide, Lord, have mercy on America. Be kind to the women in your life. <laughs> Because if they want to pay us back, all they have to do is check the wrong name. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on us. And then, number three, and then I'm going to do my, my text and I'm finished. This country has done a lot of things. And our history is written, and there's so many holes in it, it's so incomplete that I never speak anymore in my life with just out, you know, trying to add a little bit to that historical perspective uh, just to let us know that there's some other things that are part of who we are, part of our, our history. The Civil War. 1861 through 1865, there was a woman. Her name was Kathy Williams. <laughs> There's a couple of things about her that are kind of interesting. <laughs> anyway, there, uh, she was uh, the only female in the history of uh, black soldiers who was a Buffalo soldier. That's all, you know. Only one. You don't have to worry about looking up the other one. <laughs> but she fought in the Civil War as a soldier on the battlefield. Huh. A little piece of information is very significant that is totally ignored. Kathy Williams. And I'm going to tell you why she was a soldier and why she fought on the battlefield. She wasn't a nurse in the corner, all right? She had been enslaved 
in her younger years. <laughs> and this woman, in order to help convince many of those individuals uh, that had been enslaved and had run away to freedom and, and et cetera, she wanted to demonstrate from a woman's strength how important liberation and true freedom is. It's so valuable that if you are a real man, you will give your life blood to free your people. That was her message. She lived through that war. <laughs> the only a black woman soldier to receive a pension from the U.S. Army. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But what? The effect, Frederick Douglass knew her. What the effect did that? Over 225,000 black soldiers volunteered to fight in the Union's army after her. <laughs> A little bit of detail that's left out of history. But anyway, <laughs> my point is that God Servants are his servants. And uh, you and I can't tell God who is going to lead in righteousness. You can't determine. You can't do it. What you need to do in, in a soldier's line is fall in line. Understand that your God is a powerful Loving, caring, and invested as much as Kathy Williams was in the freedom of her people, she was willing to put herself on the line. And Jesus Christ, who loves us so much that he was willing to put himself on the line. Oh, that kind of love, that kind of devotion is something that it is worthwhile for us to study. And in my short lifetime, and don't know how much longer I got to go, but the strength that I have learned from observing the sacrifice of women, and especially black women, in this social context has been no short of marvelous on my thinking, on my being, on my personhood, on my own sacrifice, because the Lord of the universe does hear and does involve himself in our prayers. I am not one of these advocates that does this little, oh, well, you know, yeah, Lord answers all prayers. It could be yes, it could be no, you know, and, and blah, 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 you know, that kind of flip thing. He goes a lot further than a flip yes and no. Now, my scripture is Matthew 21, 1, 2, 3. I'm not going to read that, but but all it is is, is that it, it's talking about Jesus when he's talking to his disciples and uh, he tells them, you know, about this donkey, you know. And uh, so, <laughs> and, and he says, go get those donkeys, two of them, and bring them both. This is smart. This was a, that young donkey was con really connected to his mama. They would have had a hard time bringing that donkey if they didn't bring his mama with him. <laughs> so even in the animal world, oh, mamas are sure are important. <laughs> but I'm, I'm over in Matthew 20, in, in, and then New International Version, the mother of the Zebedee's sons 
came to Jesus with her two sons, worship, bowing down, kneeling, asked a favor of him. <laughs> oh, me. Now, I know this text has been preached many times, but in a whole different direction. What I'm dealing with is a mama believer. Now, she didn't come to Jesus to tell him to ask him to prayerfully to kneel down to worship, to, would you send my boys back home? <laughs> you know, we had a we had a going fishing business, we, and we were doing all right. <laughs> and you came along, and you you took. You took my money makers right out of my house. <laughs> but that wasn't her prayer. That wasn't her conversation. Her communication in this tender time. And he says, what is it? What is it? What do you want? A listening ear of the Savior to you, to me, today. What is it that you want? She said, grant that one of these, of my two sons, might sit on your right hand and the other on your left. Ah. You know, when you come in your kingdom, and Jesus in verse 22, Matthew 20, verse 22, uh, you don't know what you are asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, mama, you know, this thing is bigger than you. But anyway. <laughs> and then Jesus turns to the two sons, which were quietly and reverently behind mama's skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Can you drink this cup that I'm going to drink? And you know that cup was powerful in the Gethsemane when he's praying. Oh, yeah, we can, they answered. And Jesus said to them, Ah, oh, you will indeed from my cup drink. But to sit on my right and left, is not for me to grant. And he's Lord. <laughs> These places belong to those to whom they have been prepared of my father. This woman and her son, they, they knew the price. Now they, and she was willing, as Kathy Williams, <laughs> who gave of herself for a cause bigger than herself, she was willing to put into the hands of the master, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, two human sacrificial lambs for the cause. Brothers and sisters, we're talking about something that you need to talk to a woman who has a baby, who has had children. You talk to them about the life of their children. Oh, that, that's precious, boy. <laughs> you know, now she's not here, so I can say this. I think my wife would have sacrificed me before she sacrificed her son. <laughs> Man, man, yeah, I say it humorously, but I mean that. Oh. <laughs> Don't mess with that. Ooh. Don't mess with her children. <laughs> and you see, the lessons, and that's what I'm doing today. There's lessons in the scriptures that just get overlooked. Okay? And we go on about our business as if we're doing something important. But we need to get into a Sabbath school lesson. We need to get into worship. 
because okay? far too many of us have missed it. Well, you, we, we, we have turned away from the object of God's concern, the object of God's love, the object of God's mission. It doesn't go through Adam, brothers. It goes through Eve, Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> and the seed of the woman, your offspring, is going to crush the serpent, the devil, the Satan's influence, his head. I'm sorry. We may think we're popish and we're the head of the church. That's fine. But we need to consult God. We need to consult Scripture. We need to understand that our safety, our glory, our protector. In Genesis, in the Hebrew, that's what the Hebrew word says for Eve. Protector. We don't translate it that way. In English, because 1611 England was a male-dominated society, they changed the word and said, help meet. <laughs> eh, that ain't what it said. <laughs> I'm going to send you a protector. Lord have mercy. Adam needed it too. Mm -hmm. So we just need to get the word right and, and get the understanding of our God right. And then you and I can in fact be ambassadors for our Lord. It is my suggestion that somehow we're the ambassadors to somebody else besides Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. When we depreciate, devalue, and somehow ignore, and I am part of a church that plays this game of the place, well, you know, women should, you know, some of the ordained male counterparts that I worked with for 40 years. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's, that's not. God didn't ordain women to be a, yeah. I would rather these men just shut up than to keep lying, <laughs> you know? Be silent, it, you know? Keep your opinions to yourself. And I have a whole sermon on who was ordained by God in the scriptures. And the first pastor of a local church is a woman named Phoebe. It's in Romans chapter 6. If you got a King James Version, they say servant. That's not correct. Because the same word, if it's in front of a man, it's pastor. <laughs> Same word. <laughs> yeah. But when it's a woman, it's just like in Thessalonians. Now I'm just teaching here. <laughs> in Thessalonians, it talks about the your old women will teach the young. Yeah. But the word is presbyter. You know what a presbyter is? Bishop when it's a man. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if you're locked into that old lie, just be quiet. <laughs> just, you know, because the Lord has use for me too, even though I'm inferior. <laughs> it's all right. In Jesus Christ, he loves us so much that he gave us a woman. <laughs> and he loved the world so much that his most prized possession, Paul says, the unspeakable gift, he came through a, a little unmarried woman named Mary. <laughs> I tell you, you need to listen to God so we can, in fact, get on God's track 
so we can begin to do the evangelism, the expression, the love, the growth, the spiritual reality of God and stop locking the door. Thank you, God, for the action of mamas, unadulterated love, total sacrifice, a willingness to give it all for a cause greater than themselves. Our Father and our Lord, give us what we need and then open our hearts to accept it. And then we can be obedient to your commission to teach whatsoever I have taught you. And put away those childish things. Amen. Yes.
purposes of our closing prayer uh, I do want to say one thing I said that you know uh, uh, Kathy Williams is the only but uh, soldier when I said that I was not leaving out Harriet Tubman but she was not a combat soldier so you know just so you <laughs> shall we stand Father and our Lord, you have been special in our lives, our whole lives. According to Jeremiah, before we were even formed in our mother's wombs, you knew us. And so our failings are not your fault. Oh, but you loved us so much, you did not turn your back on us. And so this day, let your blessings continue to fall on us. Uh, but the admonition of you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Uh, free us up, Lord, to be all that we can be that you want as ambassadors for your cause, your love, your mercy, your grace. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us here today at the mighty Pittsburgh Seventh-day Adventist Church in Pittsburgh, California. If you have a prayer request, or desire to be baptized or have Bible studies, or if you just want to get involved and connect with us for community outreach, we invite you to go to our website at pittsburghsda.org and click on Next Step Form, and we will make sure that we get back in touch with you. If you'd like just to call us or email us, you can do so at the following number below at 925-432 7223 or email us at pittsburgh at nccsda.com. Until next time, Shabbat Shalom.